Good afternoon and welcome to Student Manager 8 Registrations. Chuck, this has been a very, very popular uh, webinar for us. We've had more registrations for this than we've had in a while. So oh, that's great. We have a lot and, of folks uh, here today. Yeah. <laughs> And we've got a lot of ground to cover. I will kind of give you a warning. Uh, Lori will be trying to shepherd all of you. We had over 90 pre-registers. So uh, if you've got questions, I'll be giving options or opportunities for you to ask questions, uh, make sure we have clarification done on what needs to be done. But uh, Lori may not be able to get to all of you. And if not, we'll follow up after the session. So. What we're about today, again, is really kind of help you, and whether you're an old pro or a new pro or a brand new, we're going to kind of go through the basics of the system and hopefully make sure you're, you're, you're taking advantage of all the different things that you can do with registrations, obviously, to get them in accurately and expeditiously and uh, to get that money from the student and the student in your class. That's what we're all about. So. All right, so basics of the system. And again, I'm jumping right at the start. I normally do this at the end. There is more to learn about registrations. Um, in the webinar archive, we have under the registration staff over 20 webinars on different components. And we have Lori Student Manger. I, I noticed that. We need to correct the spelling on that. Uh, for you to learn more about different aspects of registration. In addition, you've always got help, thanks to Cheryl and the help guide, uh, quite a bit of data on registration. So we're going to try to tell you a lot today, but know that there is always more to learn. So back to your regular programming. All right, so one of the things that you might want to note is that when we're looking at things on our uh, webinar today, if your screen doesn't look like this, it may be because your preferences are set different. Under the Registration Preferences screen in Manager is where uh, you can turn fields on and off. You can relabel fields. Um, you have behavior options down here, prompt for grouping, allow transfers of fees, how you might deal with package registrations, uh, groupings for waitlisting. Again, lots of different behavior issues here uh, that if you haven't visited this in a while, uh, take a look at this or get your keeper of the flame to go through this with you and make sure you've got things turned on that will help you get your job done. All right. Uh, again, just uh, if you're a keeper of the flame, remember blue is global. Black can be set with permission by the individual user. All right. Multiple ways. One of the, well, actually one of the uh, problems with Aceware is that you have options, uh, or it, it, I guess it's a good and a bad. The great news is you have options. The bad news is that you've got options, and sometimes you have to decide what is the best one for me. It isn't just one road to the registration. So um, you can get into registrations from the name side, look up the name, hit the Add Registration button. You can look up a course and then hit Add Edit Regis button on the course screen or you can look up a registration on the registration search screen. Now I'm going to jump into, and I don't even have, I guess I do have the demo up. Here's your demo. Uh, one thing about the um, lookup registration, and again, that's uh, uh, not in the slide, but one of the reasons for using lookup registration is that if you need to do editing of registrations that already exist, this is the most efficient way to do it because it takes you to the name lookup. You look up Costner, and it automatically puts you in edit mode on the most recent registration they've got. You do what you need to do with the registration. You close it, and now you're in the next name lookup, Bush. You're at his last registration. Do what you need to do. Close it. Look up Havlicek. Uh, so anyway, and then when you're done with the process, you hit escape out of this and you're back in. So that's really kind of the, um, for editing primarily, you can add registrations to a, a, an empty name from there, but it's really most functional for me is when you're editing registrations, adding payments to existing registrations, needing to do some tweaking of data on an existing registration. 
Um, that, and that's this look up Reggie's button, that one we just went through. So multiple ways to get there. Uh, and there is also speed reg, mass import option under the speed reg, op speed reg option, which we'll cover in a bit. Uh, so again, we everybody wishes they had a cap to do your data entry, um, but now we're at the registration screen. I do hope everybody is doing this, and this is the idea of how do you know what promotions are bringing in the money. This is the Jerry Maguire time, and what you want to ask is, what was the marketing promotion that brought that student in? Uh, one of the things to note is that there is a relationship between the source code on the name screen and the tracking code on the registration screen. Whatever you have as the tracking code on the name screen, this is the inset, will automatically be populated in the tracking code on the registration. However, for a first time registration, brand new student, brand new registration, they will be the same. But the second and third and fourth and hopefully 50th registration from this student, the tracking code could be different. So again, you need to edit that to reflect how this registration was generated. Um, so again, we think this is probably the most valuable marketing code you can deal with. And yes, Virginia, we have reports to monitor that, statistics tracking codes. All right, uh, moving through the registration record. Registrant, or the status field. Um, this is an optional use field. You can use it if you want for registrant status. Um, anything, remember, with a plus, you can modify the drop-down so you can actually use it to store any element about the registration that will help you out. Um, expiration date and completed date, these are kind of special handling fields that probably aren't going to be used on most open class, but if you have classes that do have maybe online classes that you need to deal with, uh, there are some tools that let you do that. CEUs, hours, and credits, again, they are populated in the name record based on the hours, credits in the course record. Uh, we call that kind of salvation by grace. You automatically get the credit unless you uh, have that removed from your record. The one thing to note is that if you're doing grades, hours, and CEUs, and you have need to change those, the simplest way to do an entire class is to go to the course record. And let me see if I can jump into that alt tab here. Jump, oh, I always scoop over. Jump into the course record. So if you're on a course, you can go to the student list. And at this point, you can go in and put in the grade F, A, C, and uh, be able to automatically assign grades or edit the grades, the hours, and the CEUs. You can actually edit the registration note and I think a couple other fields, maybe miscellaneous and status from the master. And you'll note at the top it says editing student roster, control F4 to save edits. I do control F4. And if you watch it to write, it should say, it should say control F4. Well, it was too quick. It says saving X number of registrations. Um, certificate date. Now, this is an optional field. If you want to track when a certificate was printed for the student, you can put that in. And again, there is a function you can add to a report that whenever you run a certificate for this student, that date would be stamped on their name record. Um, on the right of the registration panel are the special use buttons, uh, print receipt, transfer, pay info, which shows you the complete pay history of the name. Um, the one thing we didn't mention, Lori, is the F9, and I'll show that in a bit here, or the shift F9. Um, Registration code and miscellaneous code. Again, a couple of the codes on the main, on the main screen can be modified and customized. Um, and again, remember uh, labeling those. If you want to relabel the purpose of these, that's done in your preferences screen. 
who paid for this registration is a flag that we track for you automatically based on matching the payer name on the payment record with either the student name, the firm the student is from, or if it's neither one is a match, we assume it's some other person who's paying for the registration. Um, fees, every registrant is charged one main fee. Um, note, uh, if you have special fee categories for courses, i.e. if you're a staff member, something related to the, pop to the uh, uh, demographics of the person, staff, a student, a resident, a senior citizen, an alumni, if you enable fee category on the name, student manager will automatically assign the correct fee. I have a question. Uh, if you would, uh, Lori, make everybody's hand go down. Raise your hand if you use the fee preference. Uh, and I'll pull up the name record to take you where this is. Uh, so on the name record, down here, fee category, do you use this as a way to assign custom fees to people? And we're going to give you 15 seconds to raise your hand or not. All right. Let me breathe and have a sip of coffee here. Right, we'll and I'm not seeing the, I'm not seeing the registrants, so you'll have to tell me, Lori, what what what's out there. Not very many. Not very many. Yeah, only about 10%. OK, well, and I guess the point is, it depends on your circumstances. If you have these fee categories, staff discount, student discount, resident fee, what you would do, and I'm going to show you then real quick, is that on the course record, uh, let me minimize. I've mean, I got too much open here. On the, hang on a second. Uh, there we go. All right, I've got to get organized here. On the course record, uh, master and master, mastering student manager. If you have, if you create a fee label, staff fee, member fee, resident fee, senior citizen fee, and you put that on the course, if the student in that class, if a student in that class has a fee category that matches up with the with the category of the fee that you might have in the course, they'll automatically get that fee assigned to them. It's a way for you to uh, ensure, now again, maybe that's a, you lose some money, but it ensures that people who are eligible for certain discount fees will get those. So anyway, yeah, and again, you learn more about that in the help guide. So um, optional charges, um, uh, you can make adjustments to fees. Um, one of the things I'm going to offer as a tip is that this is an area that can kind of grow like kudzu or, or weeds or dandelions or pick your favorite weed. Uh, and I would recommend that whoever is the keeper of the flame go through this from time to time under the code edit tool, remove or deactivate charge descriptions that are irrelevant or no longer used because it's silly to have thousands of these when you made them one time for a conference and they've never been never been used before or since then. Uh, something unique about the registration: use the reg note. One big note is that we have double the size almost of the amount you can put in there. Um, if you selected auto stamp on your Xset mail, which is how you set up your email confirmations. Uh, the system will stamp a date in the confirmed field. That's when an email would have been sent to the student. Um, um, who was the creation date? Who was the updater? Again, at the bottom of the screen on your status area, that tells you that. And of course, user defined fields, which um, uh, you can define. Uh, additional data you might want to store about a registration. What is new, and again, I should clarify, several of the things that we are showing here are only in the 8.040 release, which would have been the conference release uh, from the ACEWAR annual conference. So if you don't have some of these things, you need to get upgraded to the current release, which is now uh, 42 and a 43 should be out in a little bit here. 
one of the new things on the course uh, UDS or the registration UDS is that you now have the ability to define labels for the UDS on the register screen on a course by course basis, which makes them, if you would, private UDS for the registration record. And that is something of particular interest if you do conferences, youth camps. So for instance, if character one on the band camp was the instrument you play, character one for the football camp might be the position they play. So you could put position on the, uh, band, on the football and put instrument in the band camp. And when you go to the registration record, um, you would see under UDS, you'd see band camp, or you'd see instrument on the band one, and you'd see position on the, um, on the football one. Um, OK, uh, oh, I'm curious here. Anybody using that right now? Lori, raise your hands down. Anybody doing that right now? Is TCU in there? I know they were ones that were really hoping to get that. I'm looking. And again, if you're not doing out, looks, looks like most conference goers there. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, but we have a couple right. of credits. Good, good. Okay, now we're moving on to fees. That's let's get into the money, payments, transfers, and cancellations. Ducks in a row. And again, I, that this is kind of part of the whole process. One of the things we want to clarify. When you're dealing with fees, of course, all of this stuff really comes from the course setup. So whoever is doing the course setup is really what's going to control the options that you have as a registrar to do uh, fees. Again, main tuition fees, make as many as you want. Of course, only one will be assigned to the student. Optional additional fees, again, make all that you want. And uh, again, you can add some of them, add all of them, add none of them. You can add multiples of them. Um, again, so those are the optional additional. So uh, first thing you do is you pick the, pick the proper fees. And basically, the total due at the top here is going to represent the totals of the registration fees for the tuition plus any optional fees plus or minus any fee descriptions is the amount due. And of course, payments will come from whatever was put into the payments field. So if you had a payment and you had a refund, a partial, and then you had another payment, it adds all those up, and that gives you your total paid. And generally, you want to, of course, unless there's going to be a billing where there's a balance due, uh, if you're paying it off, you want to make sure that those numbers at the bottom is zero. Um, all right, special circumstances. Yes, you can adjust the fees. And I'm pretty sure everybody probably uses this, the Alt F4. Uh, I am kind of curious, uh, is anybody using the Alt F4? Lori, roll, your, uh, roll the hands down. And we want to know, have you used the Alt F4 for a free form text entry? All right, what does that mean? Let me kind of show you. So if I'm at a registration for Bob Dole, and let me find a class for him that is not a waitlisted one. OK. And I needed to make a fee adjustment here. And I don't, I want to put in, uh, just because he's an old cuss, I want to put in old cuss discount. Well, rather than creating a new fee description, I can do alt and the number four, alt and the number four. And at this point now, I can type in whatever I want to. So that description can be edited, created on the fly. It is not saved. And I'm going to give him a $2 discount. Um, so that is what that uh, alt F4. Well, Lori, now that I've fiddled around, how many people use that? Oh, I have to go back and look. I was answering somebody else's question. <laughs> I was going to say, oh, your three-ring circuit there. Yeah, I, I kind of am. About 10% of people. Uh, again, all right. But, uh, the idea is that if you don't need to have a pick list item, that is one you're going to use again or again or use multiple times, um, you can use the Alt F4 to just open entry whatever you're trying to do without having to build it into that code, uh, code codes table. 
Whoa, back, back, back. All right. All right, here we go. Uh, so when you're done with the registration uh, setup where you've identified the charges are going to have, you go to the payments button. Um, and in the payment side, you by default, if there is a balance due, it is put into the payment amount field. You then select the payment type, uh, six default and six user defined. Um, when you're done putting in your pay details, you can hit this button, hit the print receipt and close to automatically save your payment close the payment record and go into the receipt printing mode rather than clicking OK close and then clicking print receipt. Remember, you've got options here. Uh, you can put in additional dotes. You have an option to clone the payment detail from a previous. It, it, the clone pay detail works just like the clone name record. Uh, if you remember, uh, if you enter information about a name, it will save it to a clipboard, and you can paste that data on the name into a new name record. Uh, that's handy if you have multiple family members registering or multiple people from the same company. You don't have to fill in address, city, state, zip. You just clone the data from the last pay, uh, the last name record. And again, you can do the same thing on uh, on cloning payments. And of course, choose to pay by firm. The firm paid it whether the name record paid it and or you want to look up a name from firm or a name from a firm a f name from firm or a name from names uh, to be the payer of record on this uh, again and one of the notes about the, the payment screen if you're making multiple payments or going back into a registration payment record to add another payment make sure you click add because it'll be you'll be editing the existing payment now I'm gonna I'm going to jump into this and create a new registration for um, this person now. And so we're going to leave the payment as it is, or the fees the way it is, go into payments. The payment amount is $500. Now, one of the tips I'm going to offer is that when you go to the payment type, you can click the drop down and pick what you want. However, if you type, the, if you just, you, you keep your, you, this is the Mavis Bacon teaches typing. You keep your fingers on the keyboard and you type in the first couple letters. I'm going to type CH. CH, check. I'm going to type CA. CA, whoops, let's try that again. CA, cash. I'm going to type MasterCard. M, MasterCard. So again, by typing the first couple of letters, it'll bring up the payment type and then you go on and go on through the record there. So um, the firm element, the name record, the clone pay detail. <clears throat> and once we save this record, uh, yeah, we're going to close it anyway. If I were to go into another student and I wanted to add another registration here, and we'll put in the registration and go to payments. Right now, you'll note over here if I Payment now, I have to pick payment type, cash. So if I hover over pay detail, it'll say clone payer info for Bob Dole into this payment. So I hit the clone button. And again, if you have uh, the same person or party making payments for multiple registrations and you're doing them one right after the other, uh, the, clone P the clone pay detail will do that. Um, now again, depending on your circumstances, you might want to just do grouping instead, which would kind of get you to the same uh, same process there. Lori, I'm going to pause. Are there any questions that you want to kind of raise that you think would help uh, that we turn the corner on people for? We, we doing good so far that you're keeping are, yeah, up? Or I think we'll... we're doing very well. I, I think we're doing okay. just fine so far. I think people are keeping up. Okay. So like I said, if there's one that you think would... Okay. If there's one you think that, that we missed a turn somewhere, just shout out and, and we'll cover it. Okay. Billing records. Uh, this is a special option uh, where you can create a registration for a billing only registration, which means you can create a invoice for it. You can collect a payment for that, but the registration is not part of the enrollment account. 
uh, for the class. And so the idea is that if you need to have a bill sent to um, the, the billing agency, um, you can create a record for the contact person for that company uh, and uh, send them the total bill for this class and the money is tied to the course, uh, the person is tied that he's got activity, but his registration or hers is not counted in the enrollment list or in the count. So I would hope, I'm going to ask again, Lori, uh, drop the hands. Uh, how many of you are using uh, the billing only record uh, for doing contract courses or contract course billings? Uh, and Lori, if you had, gives you a chance to look at a couple questions or respond to the incoming messages while these are answering. All right, three, two, one. Lori, what, how many are doing that? About 20%. All right, all right, well, good. I mean, I'd say it's useful when you have that circumstance. Okay, making a payment, you can do a, a payment. When making a billing, you can do a payment plan, which allows you to create installments for a person to uh, make payments and it'll basically create invoices that will be every 30 days and um, you can, uh, you know, for high dollar items that, that gives you some flexibility in serving your student. Payment notes in general, uh, and they sh maybe should have done this at the beginning, again, you can accept multiple payments, each with a different payment method and of course each one would have a different receipt number. You can pay part of a registration and bill the remainder to, again, that student, to a third party, to a firm. You can add notes on a payment. You can clone payment info. We've talked about that. And you can switch the payer. Now, just real quickly on the switch payer side, um, and I'll go ahead and just add another registration real quick. Overbook it. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So. I don't know why there's no payment there, but we'll we'll put in a additional charge of a buck so we can get into payments here. All right, so we go into payments, um, and we are going to say check clone pay detail again. It remembered Bob Dole was the last payer. We're not going to do that. Uh, do we want to say paid by firm? Now again, Mel Gibson does not have a firm identified on him. So you can't flip between paid by firm and paid by individual, which is what this normally does. Or you could select a payer name from the firm table, select a payer name from the, um, we need to correct the pop-up on that, but you got the gist. Go to a different person. Blagojevich is who's going to be paying this. That is part of the uh, switch to payer. All right. Uh, where, where to now? I think, uh, yeah, general questions about payments, Lori, we'll give you one more chance for nothing right now, of general? Uh, we're going to for right now. Okay. So, changing a registration. Um, now, I, I know most everybody's students will never, ever change a circumstances on a registration, but just in case. So, here are the things you can do. If they cancel a registration, you can refund all or a portion of the money. If they cancel, you can keep all of the money. If they cancel, you can transfer any money that they're supposed to get to escrow rather than to a refund. Or you can transfer them to a different, transfer the registration to a different class or to a different student. So again, lots of choices in the process. One of the new things, and this was actually uh, uh, folks who were having a lot of pending registrations that uh, somebody got in and started fiddling around and had a pending registration. They weren't, they didn't want to register, or someone starts a registration and then they say, "Ah, nah, forget about it. I don't, I don't want to do it." So if you need to cancel a registration and there is no payment, if you turn on the option that is, and again, this is a preference, quick cancel registration under the registration preferences, uh, clicking the cancel button will automatically cancel, zero out hours, and add a negative fee adjustment. Normally, it'll prompt you, do you want to clear the hours in the CEUs? Do you, you know, do you do this? Do you do that? This is basically does it automatically. 
Um, and again, you got to turn on the quick cancel registration in the preference setting. Cancel and refund, use the refund wizard. And again, um, uh, this is uh, on a registration. Um, you'll have options. How do you want to do the refund to the payer, uh, to, S to an escrow for them? How much you want to refund? Uh, one of the options that exists, and you don't see it on this example, but if you have an overpayment, uh, the student cannot read the info, and he puts in uh, uh, the late fee fee of $500 rather than the regular fee of $400, and you end up having to give him back $100. Uh, there is an option down here in an overpayment where you might have paid $110. It'll say refund overpayment. And when you click that, it automat it doesn't do any of the canceling because all you're doing is giving back the money that is overpaid, and it just takes care of it. So that's an option on the refund wizard. Okay, canceling a register. We're just whipping right through this, Lori. We might we might be able to let her out early. Um, canceling a registration with a billing. Now, uh, when you're doing billings. Uh, billings have a life of their own. So if you have a billing on a record and you cancel that registration, uh, unless you do something with that billing, void it or cancel it, that billing will still be active. And, and again, the idea is that if, if, if somebody registers for a class, they say bill me, and they don't cancel within your statutory required time, Theoretically, you could continue to bill them for that registration that you held for them because you thought they were coming. Uh, however, if you are canceling a registration and you want to just void the billing, um, you have an option now that if there is a billing active that hasn't been paid off and you're canceling, it'll ask you if you want to void, uh, void the billing. Transferring payments, and this is one that um, is really a powerful option inside Student Manager, is being able to transfer payments, uh, again, whether it's uh, like rather than refunding the money, they want to transfer their payment to another student, another course, another registration, and so again, the payment transfer button uh, is how that happens, um, and I'm not going to go into that right now, but that's that's where you can do that. Escrow, um, lots of uh, options for you on escrow. I'm going to ask you, um, uh, again, how many of you, roll, uh, Lori, roll the questions, roll roll the hands down, how many of you use escrow, uh, or, or that you'll, you'll have students' money that you store in escrow? Any, some, all? A five count. Five, four, three, two, one. Answer? About 30% of our folks. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. One of the new things, and I think we've, we've told you, is that one of the new things about ACE Web is that um, if a student, and again, this is in the ACE Web side, if, a, if you have the latest ACE Web and a student has escrow on file, um, it will tell them, and I'm trying to think, I think this will let me do that, uh, credit balance. If you are enrolling in a class online, your student is enrolling in a class online, and they have escrow on file, it will warn the student that they have money on uh, credit, and then they, but they still have to go through you to get it applied to the, to the registration. So. Transfers, again, uh, this is really pretty simple. If somebody needs to transfer to a different class or they want to give their registration to a buddy, uh, you click the transfer button. Um, and again, how you want to handle it, keep an old copy or, or just transfer this registration to the new person, how you want to deal with dates, how you want to deal with money, uh, user-defined fields, and it puts a note in the reg note um, on the process. So. Again, Lori, questions related to that that you want me to cover? Not at the moment. Just hang on. Okay. Uh, advanced features. This is something brand new announced at the conference with the 40 release. Is that you now can allow if you and we're talking about billing registrations via ACE Web. 
uh, that uh, you should know by now that when you're working on a course in when you're working on a course in ACE uh, with Student Manager, you can do the option Publish Register, Publish Register, Allow Billing. Well, what this new option allows you to do is even if a course is not set up to say allow billing, if you go into a particular student's record, Mr. Bush or George Moneybags or Donald Trump, and now his limit would be pretty low. I'm not sure I trust that schmuck. Uh, but that uh, you go into the student's record, you can put in a maximum amount that they can bill irregardless of what the course uh, billing option was set up for. So again, uh, the, this is again, Lewis and Clark recommended this, and we, we thank them for that. This lets you um, assign selected people an ability to bill registrations, i.e. for their company or for their unit, uh, even though the regular, quote, regular students would not be allowed to do billing um, on a class. Grouping. Uh, this is a, this is one that sometimes people struggle with, but we're going to try to cover that. This is the to group or not to group, um, and, and I think sometimes people get overly uh, thinking of what it does. But the main idea behind grouping is so that you, if you're going to be having multiple people in or multiple registrations together, one person, multiple classes one class, multiple people, a mixed bag. The idea is you put those registrations all together and pay for them all at one time. So the idea is that it allows you to group together a, a set of charges for registrations and make one payment for them. So what are the options that you can do? Uh, probably one of the most common ones, hopefully, for you guys is that, whoa, is that you have a student taking multiple classes, and they're going to pay for them. Well, that's, that, that, that's, that's a grouping. One company might want to register several people in one course. OK, we hope to have that. Several employees from one company in multiple courses. You can do that with, with grouping. And again, a family that might register two or three or more children, or for that matter, family members for programs, and you want to make a single payment. So how do we do this then? Uh, oh, a final note, caveat, or not caveat, but note. If you are doing company billing, you are charging registrations to a company, unless there's some reason you need some special receipt option when you're doing billings, uh, if you just say bill to the company and put in the company name, I would I would mess with grouping uh, those registrations. So, uh, option one, one person registering in several courses. So the idea is when you register that person into the first course, you stay in the registration screen, don't make a payment, and click add registration, and you just it'll it'll continue to group those registrations together. And when you're done, go to payments, and you'll have them automatically grouped. Option number two, one person. Uh, or one company, and it could be one person registering several people of his bowling league in the bridge class. If one person is going to be, have, I have five people I want to register in a class. Uh, what you do, go to the course, click Add Edit Regis, and then again, uh, at the green red screen, you click the Add button. It'll take you to Name Lookup, select your name, or remember, if you don't find a name in the database, Pressing Escape from the name lookup in this mode will let you add a new name record. Complete the registration. Again, don't make a payment. And then when you add, you click um, Add again on the red screen, Student Manager will prompt you, do you want to add this person to the group that you are creating? And again, you must have the preference for grouping turned on. And then when you're done adding all the names, you go to the payment screen and uh, check out. And again, I think we've got time. If you want to go back and see this live, we can certainly do that. The last one, uh, well, the next to the last one is uh, several employees, different people, different courses, want to pay them all together. So again, uh, register the first employee, 
don't pay, find the second employee, put them into the course, and then use the manual mode, which we'll cover in two slides, to group that registration with the one you just did. And again, lather, rinse, repeat. And at the end of the process, when you've added all the names and all the different courses, go to the payment screen, and you'll be able to uh, check out and, and pay for them. Next is the idea of the family one, and it's basically just about the same as the one we did here. Register child one or, or member one, uh, register the second child, and then click the grouping uh, button, manual mode, to uh, group with the first child. I need to spell that. Repeat as necessary. Chill, child. Well, you chill in here. Uh, when done adding the children go to payment. So, um, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to breather here. Um, so again, um, if you've got questions on that or want to see some examples, uh, we can, I think we're going to have time to, to be able to get into examples. So you, your guys' brains are beginning to explode. We've been going so fast. For manual grouping, and again, in the, the example uh, three and four previously, that when you are adding that second registration in the group, if you click the group button, it will then give you the options box. Remove, group this registration with another, which is the option you would use in our previous two examples. Um, it would then take you to a, this is a pop-up note, that you have a new preference to set how far back you go to, to, to show groupings. Uh, with large databases, that can be kind of painfully slow. So if you generally are only grouping registrations that are coming in within the last 30 days or 15 days, you want to make that number as small as possible. You can always change it on the fly, but to look up the, the group that you want to assign. And, um, and again, as we noted here, this is the prompt for grouping that we talked about earlier. If you want the one company registering several people in the same course to prompt you, do you want to group this registration with the one you just added? You got to turn that uh, preference on. Group lookup, and again, this is the idea that you're going to group one registration with another. Um, it gives you the lookup mode. One of the cool things now is that you can search by the name and or the title before you actually had to know the course number or the person ID. And again, Remember, the way this works is that the most recent registration is setting on top of the list. So if you're grouping two or three people together and you're adding them all at the same time, you're going to see, you know, Lori 1, Lori 2, Lori 3, the last two or three names that you added should be at the top of the list uh, because it's in... <clears throat> chronological order with the most newest registration on the top. Um, only issue there is for like a Greenville, if you've got 30 people doing registrations, um, your registration may still float down a bit down the page. So, all right. Any grouping questions that you want to deal with now, Lori? And you're typing, helping out people. Going once, Lori. We good. We good. Yellow. Sorry, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. I, I muted myself because the keyboard was coming through. Um, oh, okay. People would like to see the grouping option again, and they would like to see the family grouping again. Okay. Uh, why don't we do? Um, why don't we do an example? I think we're about done with the slideshow, and we'll we'll go back and do an example on that. Okay. Um, so, uh, speed registration. Now, this is really cool, and I, I don't think people use much of this. So, but under module registrations is the speed registration entry, and the way that works is that you, it's kind of like the course lookup, if you would. You go to the course records, look up the class you want to enroll, but in this time, you can kind of define default values. What the default fee is, you can default a reg code, you can put in the tracking code, um, but the idea is that you then can go into either name lookup, uh, lookup by name, lookup by social security number. 
You can choose to have automatically put the name in the class. You can default new names to the do not mail option. Uh, and he said, why would you do that? Well, if you were entering names of students in a contract course and all you had was a list of names but no addresses, you might want to mark them as do not mail so you're not trying to get their names with no address coming up in your, in your mailing list. <clears throat> so that's the um, speed reg option. One of the new options in here is um, batch loading registrations. There is the import wizard that you can actually import names from an Excel spreadsheet into a class. So again, I want to know, Lori, drop them. How many people are using SpeedReg, either through the ad name or importing from, an, from the spreadsheet? So we're going to give you a five count because you know the routine. Five, four, three, two, one. We'll let Lori scramble to the list and take a peek. Not a whole lot. I thought this would be higher, about 15%. Well, it depends. If they have, it'd be for, you know, you've got a list of names and you're adding them into a course. And so if you're not doing contract course, you might not have that. Okay, here's some unique items. Assign proxy. Um, now, again, what, what, what we're talking about here is um, on AceWeb, we have that we call proxy reg, which is I want to enroll somebody else in a class. And I don't know if I've got this cancel the entry. So if I were to pick a class and I say, I want to enroll somebody else, that's what we call proxy rich. When I do that, if I was doing registration and I'm going to enroll uh, Lori Thompson in this class, confirm and continue, I'm going to go to checkout and bill it, um, and we've got that. Uh, purchase order number required, I'm going to not worry about that. But if I were to complete that, what's going to happen is that my name would be assigned as the proxy on this particular class because I was the one who built that record in AceWeb for Lori in this class. So what you can do with this is actually be able to assign a proxy a person uh, you might say supervisor, a department head, the um, personnel director for a company. If you assign their name as a proxy on the registration from AceWeb, from AceWeb, they could go into um, the history and they say, I want to show registrations I have entered for other people, and I can look at Matthew Olson. I registered him in a class, and I can see his status in this particular course. But again, that's only true if I was the one who entered Matthew's record on, on the web, because of course we don't let uh, other people into a personal record if that student did it themselves. Uh, options, options, options. Multiple seats in a class, which is what this multiple seats option is, or quantity of optional fees. And again, the multiple seat option um, is great when you have, again, a company wants to register several people in an Excel class, but they're hiring and they don't know who it's going to be yet, but they know they're going to have five people. So they can uh, reserve those seats. Um, I guess I would be curious to know how many of you are using that, uh, but we're going to skip on through that to get back to Q&A. Um, publish on AceWeb. Uh, this is for if you're doing conferences that might be you know, fraternal conferences or annual meetings that the same people or a lot of the same people come back year after year, and the sponsor wants to show uh, other people, well, your buddy Fred is attending. Here's a list of those who have already signed up. So again, you can, um, the, the registrant has an option to be able to say, you know, yeah, show my name as a, that I'm coming to the conference. So other helpful tips, and we're on the downward stretch. Uh, new item, warning if you are applying a payment to a cancel registration. And the idea here is that um, if you 
weren't paying attention or you're dealing with uh, ACE web pending registrations where they're by default canceled and you say, oh, no, no, they, they uh, registration went through, here's a payment, uh, you, it reminds you to uncancel the registration if, uh, um, if, if that person is really a legit registration. Um, a letter in a numeric grade, and again, this is um, the idea that you could use a grade field for one and then use a miscellaneous code field for the other, or you could use a user-defined field for that. Uh, deleting payments. Um, generally, and, and this, and I want to say this, I always say never, because if your, if your operation is like most institutional operations, uh, receipt numbers are kind of a big deal, because that means you might have given this receipt to a student that says they paid a thousand bucks. And if you need to vo to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, that didn't happen, and that that's not true, um, you would probably want to, rather than marking a payment for deletion, uh, you would change a payment type to void. And that allows you to keep a record of that screwed up payment, if you would. But to note, of course, the, those voided payments voided payments are not included in any kind of financial reports. All right, and we're close. Cleaning up the registration tables. The utility now for data cleanup is right under the tools area. That cleans up user-defined fields, et cetera, et cetera. Track supervisor name, again, under additional info. You can link the registration to a name in the database uh, to kind of indicate if there's a supervisor who's approving registrations for the student. Okay, Lori, uh, I don't know where you want to start. Uh, we wanted to go back and do a group. Any other ones right now you want to kind of hit first? Um, people are asking about the proxy reg since you just left there. Let's, let's hit that first. Um, what information okay. do you need to register somebody else? Well, I'll come back with that. What information do you need if you want to proxy reg somebody else? From the uh, well, I was going to say from the web. I'm assuming we're talking about from the web, um, and the idea here is that uh, if I go to courses, I'm logged into the web, and I go to a class, Introduction to Management, enrolling somebody else. If I have not, and again, this is if I have previously enrolled somebody, their name will show up in a pick list here. Uh, and, and if you'll see at the top, if the person has an account with us, you'd enter their email. If a person doesn't have an account with us, you would need to enter an email for that person. So I guess what you would need to know is the email of that person you're going to enroll. Um, and again, or you could enter your own email and then create a new account. So if I'm going to enter, uh, Lori, I don't want to enter your name, I'm going to enter my alternate ego here. Ace. OK, hit the OK button. And so it says, there are no records matching C. Havlicek. So at this point, then, you would fill out the information for the person you are registering. Now, again, I believe this profile is one you can um, you can determine what fields you're including. Generally, it's fairly minimal, you know, name, address, phone number, maybe special needs. You'll note here that the default option is that if it's a family member, I could say populate fields from my profile, and it'll put in the address, and if I would, uh, would uh, you know, I'm enrolling a daughter, daughter number one, and I could put in the information, confirm and continue, and that then I'm I've got this uh, daughter number one have a check ready to go uh, to go through the checkout. All right, next. If you proxy reg another person, can they see the grade that you get in the class? Can the students see the grades they get in the class? Uh, yes, if, if 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 that can 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 the person doing that. The person doing the proxy registration can see the grades in the class by default. Now, again, with, with FERPA rules, that is something, if that's a uh, worry for you guys, you can turn off the grade view 
you have the option, uh, again, in how you set up data that you're going to see for other people. Um, you have an option. You can turn that field off if you don't want them to see the grade. But by default, uh, I mean, you, you, you can. You may, I guess, is what you, uh, I guess we're, we're saying. The student, of course, I'm not sure. I think, I think that's a system level. You turn it on or turn it off. I, I have to ask Cheryl on that. Good question. Next. Uh, let's see. I think this is a long list of questions. Um, does the person that you are registering with the proxy registration, do they get a confirmation notice that they were registered? Yes. Uh, you would get a registration that is sent to you. You get a blind carbon copy, if you would, of the registration email. And the student who you're enrolling, uh, an email will go to the registration that, or to the email that you assigned to them. Now, if you're a parent registering a kid and you put in your own email, you're going to get two emails, one for you that says you registered and one that says uh, the student, uh, Susie Q, is enrolled and it goes to you. But yes, both, both, both the registrant and the registrar, if you would, on the web get one. And of course, the staff member, you'll, you'll, you'll be getting a staff member who gets a blind carbon copy. All righty, I think we're going to start with the demoing of grouping. All right, so going uh, now, I want a couple things to note here. Next webinar, in case people need to be going, it is August 30th, 1.30, and it's all about managing certificates. So I want to make sure we do a shout out to that before we get going. OK, grouping multiple, uh, multiple people in a class. So let's do um, the, the example of one a uh, co company doing multiple people in a class. And again, I've made sure that I have prompt for grouping turned on. So I'm going to go to a class, uh, find one that I can kind of catalog. You know, where's Extend Student Manager with ASWIP. OK. So here's a class. I go to Add Edit Registrations, and I'm going to pull Lisa Avery register her. I'm not going to make a payment. I add another one. I'm going to pick um, who else is from St. Joseph Health Center. Oh, ST. And again, they really don't have to be in the same group. Teresa Alexander. And then it prompts me, you have added a registration for Teresa. Do you want to group it with Lisa Avery? Yes. And again, just keep doing that. So multiple people will add one more. ST, and we're going to add Bill Smith. You're adding a registration. Do you want to group it with the last one? Yes. So what we're doing now, we're automatically building a group. It's doing the grand totals there. I can click on the Show Group button to see who I have in the group. And when I'm done adding people, and they, they don't have to be with the same company. If, if you're an agency, and the uh, Department of, uh, of Labor is sending five people from five different companies to a training class, and Department of Labor is picking up the bill, I mean, you could pick different people. So we go to Payments Now, uh, indicate, and I, I, I'm going to tab over and do CH. They brought a check in here, one, two, three. And the payer name is a different agency. It is uh, Kansas State University. Hit the OK, print receipt, and close. And basically what it'll do then is it'll show the different people that are registered for this class, makes a payment on each registration. So you've got one receipt, uh, one set of receipt numbers uh, for all of the people who are tied into that one registration. All right, multiple people, one class, paid for by one person. If we have the mother with the kids, and we're going to do Havlicek here, and I'll do my wife and I. Well, I get to Havlicek, and we could start either one. OK, Chuck Havlicek, I want to add a registration. I'm going to put, I'm, we're going to sign up for beginning crochet. OK, so here's beginning crochet. I'm not going to make a payment. I'm going to hit Add again. Whoops, and I take that back. I, if, if I start the registration and I hit Add, it will look up another class 
to put in with me. What I have to do now in this case, different people, different classes, or the same class, I have to go to the person. So I'm going to go to Barbara now. I'm going to hit add registration. I'm going to put in crochet now. Now, you didn't see me do this, but what I did was press Alt F1. And Alt F1 will repeat the last course number that I entered. Remember, I just registered myself in beginning crochet. And so if I want to register another person in beginning crochet, all I have to do, I don't have to type in the number, remember the number. If I do Alt F1, it'll automatically fill in the course number, um, and I can pick the course. Okay, Alt F1. So here's Barbara Havlicek. Now, I, I have to click, because the different people, same class, different people, different classes. I have to click Group. This is the manual mode. I hit the Group button. Do I want a link? Actually, this is... When you're, when you're doing this on a new registration, it asks you a little different question than when you have an existing one. My, in, in, in the slideshow, remember I had the four different panels. This one just, do you want to link it or not? And we say yes. So now it gets us to the grouped, uh, the, the list of registrations. And what this is, is a chronological order of registrations. Um, with the most recent registration at the top. So if you have a small operation or things are slow, that person you just entered is going to be the top registration. You just click on it, and you have made them a group now. So we've got Chuck and Barb. And at this point, I make the payment, uh, make the payment amount, and again, clone pay detail. Remember the clone pay detail. Remember the last payment. Um, I'm gonna, not going to cheat Kansas State, but I'm going to say I'm going to make the payer name, not Barb, but I'm going to actually be paying for this if I could type my name. And at this point, I'm done. So I think those are the two that kind of went through. Now, when we were talking about the group option, now that I am already in a registration, I've saved it and I click group you have that uh, four option one that I had showed you in the in the um, in the slideshow so we're doing all right Lori any other questions how are we how are we doing here uh, somebody would like to see the payment plans please payment plan all right yeah if they haven't done payment plans that's kinda cool let's say Miss Barb here would like to take a class that's a high dollar class so we're gonna do whoops wrong one uh, add registration, and we want to do application development. Application development seminar, that is a $1,000 class. So I said, eh, could I get a payment plan on that? Well, you go to the payments button. By the way, the payment plan can only be done from the back office. You can't do a payment plan on the web. There is an option on the web where you say a deposit program, but the payment plan is only available from the back office. That is, you guys as registrars. So we've got Barb Havlicek. We're going to go to payments. We're going to say billing. I'm going to tab over and type B for billing. And the payer name now, by default, is the company that the person belongs to. And uh, so generally, you could say, but he says, well, wait a minute. I'm paying for this myself. So if you'll see up here on the tools, it says bill to individual. So now we're back to Barb as the billing entity. And I want a payment plan. So how many installments? Well, we're going to do, we're going to allow her to do four since uh, she's kind of nice. I'm going to let her do four. And so what it'll do is it'll divide up the total amount of the bill by four and put in a date 30 days from today for the next two payments, three or the, the balance of the payments. One bill would be due now, and then one in 30 days, 30 days, and 30 days. Now, note, you can edit if you had a, a three. Let's cancel this. Let's say that we wanted to do a three, 
plan installment and rather than 33, 33, 33, 33, you could go ahead and put in here 33 even, 33 even and make this 34 so that um, you have even numbers on the bill. And again, it will warn you if you come up with some math that doesn't work, you got an extra three in here somewhere and you tab out and it'll say, wait a minute, you have entered a different amount. Do you really want to do this? It allows you to do it, but he said, oh, wait, 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 let me check my math. Oh, one of these needs to be 34. So again, it'll check your math. And again, if you want to change these billing dates, you say, well, I want to make it due the first of the month rather than 30 days from today. You can edit the dates on the, hit the OK button. And at this point now, we've got three different payments for uh, the class. Billing number one, billing number two, um, within there. That is the billing plan. Now, pay info is where you can see all of the payments or billings assigned to the student. I mentioned the Alt F9 option. Um, Alt F9, if you're wanting to look at payment history on a name or, or a registration, if you set on the, the registration and hold the Alt key and press F9, it'll give you a list of every payment, every billing for this student, no matter what class, no matter what year, whatever. So it is a way for you to get a quick view, again, from the name record, Alt F9 gives a payment history for Barbara Havlicek. Uh, that, that's a handy tool. All right, uh, we'll, how are we doing for questions? Uh, we'll, we'll stick around. Uh, if you need to leave, fine, but we will, I'll answer questions. You got 40, we still got most people here. Oh. Anything you want to uh, try to hit, Lori? You, or you... I think if you would show a billing record, uh, that would do us for, for today, I think. I think if you would right. show us how to so, do that, we'd be good. Well, a billing record now, so we're at the registration now, and if I go to payments, we're going to see a billing record. And so this is um, the, the, the first billing in the list, and actually, oh, here's the first billing, 816, 2016, so that we've got um, a, the total amount due. And again, we, we, we did not cover billing and invoicing. There is a webinar. Remember the webinars? We've got on, where's our webinars? I don't, I guess I closed my, uh, my website. But that we've got uh, in, in the webinar archive, we do have a session on dealing how to do invoices and billings out of this. Uh, so at this point, this is the billing. We haven't created an invoice for it yet. Um, is that, again, and the way you do that is that once you've created a bunch of bills, um, you would go to tools, or no, you go to reports, invoices, run invoices, print new invoices, and it'll basically generate invoices for all invoices with the date stamp up to and including the 16th. So we hit the OK button, and there's uh, the one we did that group for Aceware and the three people. And there's Antonio Thomas, there's Barb Havlicek, Hollywood Productions. And it'll go through that, and it'll tell us there were total 4,900 billings. Close it, print it, assign the invoice number. And at this point now, if we go to Havlicek, Barb, and I'm, I'm going to go the other direction. So if we went look up registration, have a check, Barb, it'll automatically drop us in her last registration. I go to payments, and I have to navigate over to the one on the 16th, and there's the re invoice number. So this billing has now been changed to an invoice, which would be an indication. We have then generated an invoice to send to Barb, and we hopefully will be getting a check for $33.33 or $333 uh, from her on that. Lori, how are we doing? I think okay, we probably on better. On that screen. Oh, no, oh, on the registration screen. Go back to that screen. screen. 
HAV, HAV, BAR, and uh, payments. No, no, go to the registration screen itself. Oh, the registration screen. Yep. Yep. That billing record option right in the middle of the screen. I think we have. Some oh, questions. that billing okay. record. Oh, I, yeah. That, I thought. You, I'm sorry. Um, this. I'm going to go to an existing student that I know has one, Monique Fort Worth. And so what we've got for Fort Worth is that she has. She is the head of Acme Customer Service Training. And here we have a case where she is paying for seven people from her company. Uh, and so these other seven people don't have any fees. She's picking up the bill. But if we were to go to that course now, Acme Customer Service Training, and look at student list, here are the seven people, bing, 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 bing. And we have Monique referenced in the course, but she is the payor. So there are seven names in here, but it says enrollment is six because Monique is in there as a payor, and that is the billing only record, is that it exists to collect the money, send a bill to Monique, but she's not in the class as far as student of record uh, for credit. It wouldn't show up in a transcript, wouldn't show up in your enrollment report. So. Sorry, Lori, I was yeah off base on that. So, okay. I think we're done. Whew. Covered a lot of ground, folks. Thank you much, boy. A hardcore group stuck around. Uh, remember again, uh, our next webinar is August thirtieth. Uh, Lori, thank you much. Great session today. Um, everybody have a good week, and uh, hopefully the kids are all making it to school okay. A lot of schools starting this week. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.